Hey, it's Derek with another edition of Insta Good, brought to you by Lasher's Elk Grove Subaru and JustServe.org. Today, we are with Jackie once again. We've spoken to her before from Break the Gap, Sacramento. And Break the Gap is here to break the social impact on poverty and homelessness through art, creative outreach, and resource allocation. She's going to explain to us what that means. For those people who have not seen uh, the first time we talked to you several months ago, explain to us really what that means, what your organization does and uh, what you have coming up that people can get involved with in the community. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, last time it was really fun chatting with you. Um, and then now just to follow up, if you didn't take a listen, um, our initiatives would break the gap. So let me start off by defining what the gap is. The gap is every stigma, every negative attitude, every, every um, border of separation that's keeping us from seeing people experiencing homelessness as if they're actually people. So Break the Gap, our initiative is to break the social impact, which there's a negative social impact on those experiencing poverty and homelessness. So our take on the homeless epidemic is a social one. We believe that social connections, social connections is what leads people to actual true transformation. So what we do is Art. Art is one way by getting people to really express who they are, what they are, what their stories are. There's people on the streets who have amazing stories. So our creative outreach, it's not just regular outreach. It's called creative outreach because we do like a movie at the park. So we literally have started our movie at the park. It's been about like two months now where we screen a movie at the park and that's our creative outreach. So we're not just going out there to give you a meal. We're going out there to give you a social experience that you might not be able to afford that maybe you'll be inspired by the film, you know? So that's our way of doing creative outreach and resource allocation. We're out there just giving out as many resources as we can, even with like connecting with City of Refuge and like providing um, steps towards housing. Housing is important. There's people who are out there and you might not even know, but they're ready to go on their feet. And the only thing that's missing is housing, you know, and there's a huge housing crisis. So that that's what we do. We have a lot of awesome events coming up this month as well. Like we're going to have a movie at the park. We're going to have our thrift experience again. We're going to have, um, we're going to be out at an event called um, do something about it tour. We're going to have like a booth set up. So that'd be a great opportunity for anybody to just come out and meet us. So there's several things going on. Tell me more about movie and the movies in the park. Where is it exactly? which park are you with caesar chavez where, where do you have it yes yeah so this is at caesar chavez plaza right downtown on i street yeah we used to do a lot of events there actually like we really? have a concert ever we do that yearly and typically we do it at, at caesar chavez so uh it's that's really that's cool though yeah the spirit of caesar chavez is truly there and there's just so much unity there the spirit of the lord is there there's when we first started at Cesar Chavez, which was about two years ago, I remember there was not a lot of people out there. And one of my prayers was like, God, bring laborers out here, bring people out here. And now Monday through Friday, Monday through Sunday, there is meals out there every single day. Like seriously, there are no so people are being fed for free. I mean, you're taking care of people on, on, a, on a holistic yeah. level, as I say, right? You're giving them yeah. hope and giving them an opportunity to have the most basic things like a meal too. Exactly. So that that's being met, but obviously the importance of we don't just meet people there. Like we we want to break the gap of like I want to know who you are as a person. Tell me your sure. story. You know. You know, I often the homelessness in in California, for example, is so bad, and there's I believe the the figures like over a quarter million people in the state of California. And that's probably on, honestly an underestimate of the reality. And you walk around Sacramento and you can see it. And it's terrible. And I often walk by these human beings who are, in some cases, not regarded as human beings and ignored. And I think to myself, what is their story? These are human yeah. beings with souls. These are human yeah. beings who have just as much value as I do. What is their story? And how do we, how do we, like you say, break the gap to be able to communicate and to be able to humanize them? Yeah. And I love, I love that aspect of your organization. I think it's great. How long have you guys been doing it? Let everybody know how how long Break the Gap was. Yeah, been so Break the Gap was founded in 2019. So it's been about two years now. Actually, yeah, this March hit two years. We had a huge two year celebration and um, we have learned so much. You know, the amount of like stories that we've learned, the, the perspective that we have even learned, you know, and I've said this before, like, 
you can have a roof over your head and still be homeless mm -hmm. because home is not a place. It's an experience. And if we all That's get right. to see that we are all homeless until we're back at our true home, which is ourselves, which is like the spirit of the Lord lives within all of us. So just knowing like home is right here first. And we've created such a society that keeps people from their true home, which is right here, like I said. So I love what you said. Yeah, there's stories out there. I think that, you know, you were talking about the true home is being here first, right? And I think that as esoteric and spiritual as that sounds to some people, yeah. it is a constant principle and fact of our existence that simply will never change until we fully recognize it, right? Yeah. And that's what y'all are doing at Break the yeah. Gap. You're helping step by step, brick by brick, uh, trying to trying to to break that gap. And also, I imagine that you have seen some inter interesting statistics and interesting things come out of the last year of the pandemic. I imagine that in some cases, in some scenarios, things have been a lot worse for people, right? Yeah. yeah. So like um, the house, you know, the thing is, Derek, that there was already a housing crisis before sure. the pandemic. Right. So it, it just allows you to see the like ever, even bigger need for it. Like uh, in a sense where like the cities and the counties, like, um, they're they're pushed towards it like for example like we had the opportunity to go out to san diego and like see how they dealt with homelessness you know during the pandemic and right one of the things that they did was they just put everyone in the con their convention center in the um their arena and like whereas sacramento we didn't entirely do that it's just really interesting to see how everyone dealt with the face of homelessness throughout the pandemic and the amount of job losses that they have been it allowed to like, allow people to see like this can happen to anybody, you know, like just this pandemic alone, like so many people lost their jobs, you know, and even with the whole stimulus checks their people in the street didn't entirely get the opportunity to even gain access to that. There's still sure. hurdles and obstacles to getting that. So right. I, I understand there was an initiative and I, you mm -hmm. probably know about this where, yeah. where people who were in need on the street, had the opportunity to receive that stimulus money, but they didn't know, many of them didn't know how to go about doing it. Yeah. So people were assisting them in getting that money to just be able to, to get certain need, like, you know, very specific and very simple needs met. Yeah. Yeah. And as we, we were able to extend that resource as well, we came across two very, very huge obstacles and that was identifications and, um, so it was identifications and the lack of addresses. You know, there sure. was no actual address over it. Yeah, right. give me a second. No problem. You're good. Again, we're with uh, <laughs> Jackie from Break the Gap. Just taking a quick second to uh, to get to get it in order over there. I know there's a lot going. I know there's a lot going on over there, and I don't want to take yeah. up too much of your time, yeah. but what are some specific dates you have coming up? Uh, let's see, uh, tomorrow, Saturday, you have an event, right? And then you have more events in the month of May. Tell me about them. Yeah. So I can just kind of go over a calendar for the month of May. Um, Saturday we are, there's an event called 916 Ness and they are about gang prevention, gang violence and, um, they invited us to set up a booth out there. It's for their do something about it tour. So it's an art showcase. We'll have our table set up. We'll have like our program information, volunteer information, get to know us information. So you guys can come visit us, come get to know us. Um, there will also be an art showcase. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be at Max Bear Park, um, right by 35th Avenue. So Max Bear Park. By the way, how can we get a hold of you on, on social? I know on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash break the gap org. Uh, You're on yeah. Insta as well, right? Yeah, Instagram, it's break the gap org. Right. So, so just Facebook gap. and Insta, same thing, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then obviously our website as well, break the gap.org. And then um, May 15th, maybe you're someone who's volunteered with us before. Maybe you are, um, you volunteer with us even one time. We are having a volunteer appreciation dinner. I think it's amazing to also pour back into the people who pour into us. So we'll be hosting a volunteer appreciation dinner. RSVP will be, um, on our social media pages. Once that's announced, um, May 21st, we'll be having our movie night. So you guys just heard a little bit of what that's about. Come out that day. Come experience it with us. We have a projector out there. We have speakers out there. We have a screen out there. And what I love is that our team usually canvases the streets. And we do like, what movie do you want to watch? So we do polls. And we choose whatever movie they want to watch. And they're always so stoked about it. So it's amazing. 
What, um, what can just curious? What what's been the lineup? Uh, can you okay. remember a few off the top of your head? I'm just so curious, the kind of movies people are picking. So the first one was the Black Panther. Okay. Uh, the second one was uh, let me think. Oh, it was Aladdin because this was around Valentine's Day, so that was like, like Disney's, the like the original, the cartoon. No, it was the most the newest one with the most the, recent the one. Yeah. Got it. Got and it. And then the last one was Nacho Libre. Oh my gosh, I was on the floor laughing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. So people can vote on the movies too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then May 29th, which is the last Saturday of the month, we'll be having our thrift. Ex oh yeah. By the way, th these are both at Cesar Chavez. These next two events, May 29th will be our thrift experience. And that will be once again at Cesar Chavez. And the vision with the thrift experience, I remember when I first started Break the Gap, one of my thoughts was, how can I get a group of people experiencing homelessness, put them in a bus and take them to the thrift store. And I'm like, that's not possible. How about we provide a thrift store experience for them? So we have a runway where they could walk down the runway and feel special. We have clothes racks. We're trying to get some mannequins this time, but um, yeah, we just like to provide a, sh a free shopping experience for them. Uh, by the way, if, if anybody watching has access to mannequins, hit us up so we can hook Jackie up and break the gap. Okay. That would be amazing. We have time. Yeah, I'm serious. You never know. I figured you asked. We have a lot of you know, a lot of people watching and, and listening, so I figured we we would ask Jackie a really important personal question for you. What led you to decide to start this organization? What was it in your heart, in your philosophy, in your mind, in your life that said I have to do this for the community? Um, Derek, a lot of this to me is spiritual. I remember growing up and always saying things like, "I want to go home." And people would be like, okay, I can take you home right now. And it's like, they didn't really understand what I was talking about. I remember growing up so spiritual, remembering like this connection to my true home. And as I began to like, in my teenage years, like I was addicted to um, Xanax. I was addicted to alcohol. I was addicted. I was just doing all these things. I was always smoking. I was always high. Like if you knew me like years ago, I was always high. And my abuse and substance led me to be abusive towards my family and my parents and people around me to where I got kicked out of my house at an early age. And I was everywhere, you know, and I remember getting thoughts of home is not a place. It's an experience. I felt home with the person that I was with at the time. I felt home like around people that I loved and I began to get deposits like, we could provide the experience of home to the streets and get people to access a place of purpose where they can express who they truly are. And we got to break the fear of man. So I think the Lord has really put this mission of breaking the fear of man off of our communities, off our broken communities, broken people who have the opportunity of restoration. So it's more of a spiritual thing for me. Was there a, was there a specific moment in your experiences? Like you said, you know, if people knew you back in the day, uh, and you've gone through all of these struggles with, with being addicted and, and, and additionally having all these issues in your life that, that led you to be at odds with your family. What was the single most important moment where you were like, I have to change. Something's got to change. Can you share that with us before you go? Yeah, yeah this, is a, this is a huge part of my testimony. I'll never forget. And just I just really want to be vulnerable. Like I was on, a, on an LSD trip and... I remember like the atmosphere of the room changed and I grew up knowing Jesus. I grew up knowing who the Lord was, but I never entirely walked with the Lord. And I remember, I remember growing up and, and during that trip, actually the whole atmosphere of the room changed and I began to see like emeralds and like these rainbows. And I heard a voice that said, you never have to come here again to find me. And I heard that as clear as day. And since that day, I stopped substances and I never, I never stopped feeling high. I never stopped. And that's when I just started walking with the Lord. I rededicated my life to Jesus and my whole entire life changed. And I got the vision for Break the Gap. And it was like a whole 360 took place. That is yeah. a profound thing to have heard. And I, yeah. and I, and I'll leave it up to people watching to decide. I think you know where it came from, but I'll leave yeah. it up to people to decide where they think that voice came from the inner voice we call the inner voice there's a voice beyond what we can possibly understand that drives us to 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 wake up and to to really witness and to learn who we are and to decide yeah. we want to change for the better jack yeah. you are absolutely amazing you know i love you so much in your organization we support it here at now 100.5 uh, i really appreciate the time i really do and i appreciate your vulnerability and telling us your story it's quite all right. And, and thank you for telling us because there's a lot of people that may need to hear it too. And uh, maybe we can, go ahead. 
Yeah, you were amazing. And oh, I just so kind. thinking about like the call the other day it was at such a spontaneous time and in a specifically really humble season where um, we were kind of on the back end being humble about everything we were doing. And there's a verse that says, when you humble yourself, the Lord will exalt you. And I think this yes. is an opportunity. And just, this was fun. You're such a fun guy, dude. I appreciate that. I also believe in grace too. And I think that people yeah. can be forgiven if they forgive, forgive themselves and they decide that they want to change. And that's a big part of, of, of my philosophy personally. Actually, what we do here at the radio station, we believe in that. And yeah. you're, you're fantastic, Jackie. Thank you for everything you do. And thank you for being strong and having character and, and leading our community with this great organization. We appreciate you so much. Likewise. Thank you. Once again, another edition of InstaGood with Jackie from Break the Gap brought to you by Lasher's Elk Grove Subaru and JustServe.org. Jackie, thank you so much and good to see you again. Of course, Derek. Have a good day. You too.